So I'm Clayton Caps from Salado, Texas. I have Junkie the movie car, but I also have this treasure, and uh, I want to share it with you really quick. So this is a 1963, and uh, this is my daily driver car. M most people have their uh, older Volkswagen as their second car, just fun car, but th I'm kind of old school and I'm stuck in the past. I drive this on average 50,000 miles a year, and uh, if I don't do 50,000, I at least do 45. <laughs> My current mileage, as you can see, is 1,063,655 as of today. And uh, But the story of this car is, I bought this specific, I've been driving a Herbie since 1996. Uh, there were a few years where I would sell it, make another one and stuff, but I, I locked onto this car in 2005 because the original owner um, that had bought it years ago in 63 from Gorman McCracken Volkswagen in Longview, Texas, he, um, his name is Mr. Lee. Matter of fact, he's about to be 95 years old and he's in the nursing home and I, sometimes I'll still drive and say, hey, your car is still going. He gets the biggest kick out of that. Um, but he bought the car and this was his company car. He worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and he clocked from 1963 through the late 80s, he clocked 600,000 miles on this car. So when the odometer would roll back to zeros, he would have it documented and he has a book and I've continued my own book about the date, the gas station I fill up at, the mileage, the octane, how many miles per gallon, anything I do to it, just to keep it going. And so, yeah, so I bought this car in 2005. It was originally the L87 Pearl White. And uh, so I had uh, it re restored. It does have the original headliner in it, 59 years old. <laughs> and uh, I turned it into a Herbie in uh, the first time, July, July the 3rd, the day before the 4th of July, 2005. So it's been a Herbie since July 2005. And, uh, but I drive this car everywhere. Um, the original 40 horse engine was uh, used up until the 70s and then Mr. Lee actually went to a, seven, a 1600 cc. When I got the car, I ran the 1600 for a while, and then I went through this thing where I wanted to be a 40 horse again, so I put a 40 horse back in it. I sold the 1600 to get money for the 40 horse, and then I drove the 40 horse for a while, and then for two years, I had a 36 horse in this thing. I drove <laughs> just to do it. <laughs> and uh, then after that, I went to a 1600 dual port, which is what it has now. Um, this is a little bit unique engine. It's still, it's still stock from the factory. Uh, but this is the engine out of this is from a 2004 Mexico Beetle, and uh, yeah, and they were um, from 1993 through 2004, which was the last model worldwide. Uh, they actually did fuel inject it, but uh, so instead of a instead of a carburetor, it's got the throttle body and and electronic coil. Distributors advanced by the computer. It's got an, I did want the stock sound and the stock look of a muffler because all fuel injections have a one tip and a catalytic converter. Since this is a 63, I, I technically don't have to have a catalytic converter for that year model. So I put an oxygen sensor on the stock muffler. That way it still has a stock sound and everything. But, but even though it's fuel injection, it's still a dual port 1600. It's not a, a, not a big engine, it's just, but this is a factory engine. And I've, I've currently got 186,000 miles on this engine. And it's, got, it's, got, it's starting to sweat oil and stuff. And, and uh, when I hit 200,000, I'll probably go ahead and refresh the engine, do a valve job and a rebuild. I, I want to, but you know, but I tell you what, it's 186,000 and I, I can still go 75, 80 down the highway, no problem, and it just does great. And uh, so, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm about to, um, about to go on some big trips. Um, I, I drove to Florida for this trip, and uh, the first weekend of May, here in about a month. I'm going to be driving from Texas up to Wisconsin to go play in a music event. And then I'm going on a huge trip uh, the end of May and May 27th. I'm going to leave and go on like a 6,500 mile trip. Leaving Texas, going to go up to Colorado, um, camp out at Yellowstone National Park, go to Glacier Bay in Montana, up to Washington State, do the Olympic Peninsula, drive down the uh, 101 California coast, see some friends and other Herbie friends in Burbank, California. And, and then go to San Diego, Las Vegas, Grand Canyon, <laughs> and back home. So 
And everybody, everywhere I go, they says, you drove all the way in that? And I said, well, why not? You know, and they say, well, aren't you afraid you're gonna break down? And I said, you know, the thing about, I would be more afraid to, that I would break down in a car that is just kind of stored in a garage and not driven much. But when you drive a car all the time, you eventually get to what, whatever's gonna fail is gonna fail. And if you fix it right and don't rig it, <laughs> but you know, fix it right. Um, th these are bulletproof, they really are. And, and do I ever break down? Periodically, this engine has actually never in 186,000 failed me internally. I've replaced like an oxygen sensor or a head temperature sensor because of fuel injection stuff. But same valve train, same pistons and everything. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, I, and, I, and I average 20, 27 to 32 miles per gallon depending on if there's a headwind or how fast I drive. Coming up here, I averaged 27. I got 30 one time. <laughs> So when I bought it, there was two, and he had the 40 horse continuously rebuilt all those years. And so, and then I went, the thing is, I was, I was switching motors even when the motor was running fine. I wasn't pulling it out because it was broke. So 40 horse, 1600, and then I put another 40 horse in it, a 36 horse. And, so this is the fifth motor. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, the other motors were... You know, I just, I would pull it out and sell one just to get another engine. <laughs> yeah, the, the key for me, and I've been driving these 32 years, is, is maintenance. And, and what I mean by that is if I'm on a long trip and, I've, and I'm like on this summer trip, I'm going to go 6,500 miles. Well, I, I change the oil on the trip. If uh, this specific engine does have hydraulic lifters on the valves, but, but even the engine before this, when I would go on long trips, I would park in the back part of a, uh, my hotel so I drain the oil and then the next morning when the engine's cool, I'll just get out and do check my valve adjustment. If anything needs to be tweaked, I'll tweak it. So the, the, whole, the old thing about if it's not broke, don't fix it, is not for a Volkswagen. You, what you do is you maintenance it. To how, this was built to be maintenanced. And it doesn't mean that's a negative thing. It's just, it's, it's a thing to keep your car alive. And I'm, and this is not me patting myself on the back, it's just that all I'm doing is following Volkswagen what they said. Every 3,000 miles you check, you, you know, you check your valves, change your oil, you know. If you're running points, which I, which I actually do on some of my cars, and I used to on this before this engine, uh, every 15,000 miles, I know this sounds, can points and condenser go longer? Yes. But I would go ahead and spend like $15 every 15,000 miles. I would just go ahead and change my points and condenser lube my distributor cam and uh, I never I never had points strand me ever I kept them fresh kept them adjusted every 6,000 miles I check my timing if it's off one degree I full advance the engine put a timing gun on it even if it's one degree off I don't say that's close enough I, I want it exact the other key that is and, and I'm this is something I kind of smile at because this is an argument amongst the Volkswagen community but if you're running a dual port engine and you don't have these extra air louvers on the engine lid, you notice this is closed. I've driven 186,000 in this engine and I've driven, uh, I drove over 100,000 in, in a regular like carbureted dual port. I never have the engine cracked. All I, all I do is make sure that your rubber seal and all your tin is in place. And the old German mechanic I used to go to for, for 20 years told me the key to cooling these is Yes, some people prop their lid open, but they but they said once you close this lid, if everything's in place at idle, you should be able to hold a napkin or a piece of paper right at, right here. And if that sucks to the louvers, that shows you that it's that it's forcing the the fan is creating a vacuum on the inside, and and it's forcing it to suck cool air from up here. So the extra louvers, are, Volkswagen put them there, but they're not they're not necessary you can run them with the lid shut and i've, dri I've driven through death valley at 122 degrees i've driven th um, this past summer with over 100,000 miles on this engine i drove uh in 117 degrees 75 miles an hour for three hours and it it does not run too hot <laughs> wow. if it if it ran too hot i couldn't get 186,000 out of this so yeah, it's, it's a testament to the design. And one more thing about the louvers is even the late, even the late 70, uh, 70s cars that were convertibles, 
technically when you the convertible doesn't have these louvers they just have the louvers down here so Volkswagen recognized that one set of louvers is technically enough so it's just instead of having them here they had them here so yeah but uh, that's the key to the maintenance of the car it will get you there